All right, it's no secret that Wine for the People is based in a very unique country uh, and continent at the exact same time, that is Australia. And we have a very rich wine history and different dropout good friends are about to give us six Australian heroes. So basically wine styles that have evolved in our country and created some of the most iconic things that we have done as a wine producing nation, things that we're really good at, or maybe even quirks that we have kind of you know brought to the world stage that nobody else can do as good as us or maybe as uniquely as us. All of the wines are available to purchase on different drop uh, link below uh, for the code to go to the wine for the people section to get 10% off your next order uh, let's get into it shall we go of your heroes uh, I'm expecting a lot of Chardonnay I'm not gonna lie I'm, I'm always expecting Chardonnay though so one number one uh, I've got three whites, three reds, nice mix down the middle. I'd imagine I'm going to be drinking some pretty heavy Shirazes here in a moment, so I might just uh, take a second and enjoy the lighter side of things in the first half of the bracket. <sighs> yeah, it's definitely giving Chardonnay. <laughs> I mean... A little bit thin up front, tastes ripe, and tastes like lime, specifically lime. Turbocharge. Texture's there as well. It's starting to kind of morph a little bit. That talky, like that chalky, high acid, like lime powdery thing is so much fun in this style of wine. Yeah, this is um, some Ripper Hunter Sem. Yep, it's got that like tinderboxy thing on the end from the oak. It is definitely leaning more sort of like spiced wood as opposed to that buttery lactone thing that I really enjoy in Chardonnay. So it's not the one that it's not the one that I would be reaching for first and foremost, but it is just like slap bang down the middle. Great example of Chardonnay. And I think it's brilliant. I think it's really, really brilliant. I would pay uh, high 40s to mid 50s per bottle and I'd buy 12 bottles. I just know where that's going to go in the cellar, which is awesome. <laughs> Uh, going to something that even looks a little bit more luscious, like it looks a little bit just richer, denser. Ooh, smells salty, seaweedy. That's interesting. What an interesting nose. I do really love this. Really interesting. Could this be Semyon? You know what? I'm, I'm going to go like I'm going to get SBS or S SSB. Either one. It's a. It's. A, I think it's a, a Semyon South Blend because I think there is that kind of perfume to it. Yep. Yeah, really. Lean, really mineral, a little bit of acid. I don't know I was doing Donald Trump hands there, just as I'm quoting that. Um, lean, mineral, acid. I don't think it's Riesling. I reckon it's going to be a Pinot Gris or something like that. I think it could be a, um, I think it could be a, Char a Chardonnay, just like something that is unoaked and exceptionally quiet. I think it's very, very, very good. Just not too sure what to make of it. No, I really like this one. Love the texture. Got that last kind of orchard fruitiness, that talky thing that acted a little bit lower than it was in the previous one. Could be age, could be a few different things. I really quite like it. I'm gonna grab half a dozen. I'll pay, I'll pay for another 40 bucks for this. Both, like, both really sit that really high quality level. One number three. Um, I'm expecting a Riesling here, purely just off playing uh, what I would expect to turn up in the tasting of this bracket, being Aussie Heroes. Broad. Aromatics of that are fantastic as well. It could be like real top end Pinot Gris. Smell, oh, what, Viognier. Viognier. This smells like, yeah, it could be Viognier. Which, what, what Australian hero is known for Viognier? Your lumber. This has the weight and texture of something like a piano in that kind of like medium ish, medium plus ish bodied style of wine. That is so good. That is so good. I'm, I would drink shit loads of that. That's awesome. It's kind of grown on me really, really quickly. Very savory. It's got this, I don't know, I describe it as cardboardy. It's just like, it almost tastes like stale to a certain degree. Uh, but that this is just me grasping for ways to describe a characteristic that is quite often in wine. It does, there seems to be a bit of oak use here. A little bit, a bit of texture. Acid's great. Texture's awesome. I'm going to say 12 for this one because I love it. This is uh, my favourite so far. And I will be getting, uh, I'll be happy to pay. I reckon I'd pay 50 bucks for this. I think Fiona should be at this kind of price. Well, most of them aren't, but you know, this is a really good price point. I'm not saying that this wine is off or that it's stale or that it's flat. It's just, that's the sort of, it's the nearest thing that I can reach for when trying to compare it to something else. All right, wine number four. Into the reds, we have something with a faded rim. Ooh, -wee. that's awesome. Yum, this is good. This is cool. I really like this. Um, got that kind of like perfect medium weight red thing. Then it is quite warm. There's a bit of booze in it for sure. Um, I reckon maybe it's a Grenache or something like because it does feel like it's like it's typical of Aussie reds. Like it, it tastes like it's from a hot climate. Like the the weight of alcohol in there is definitely present. The nose is so beautiful and floral. Wow, uh, amazing Syrah. 
amazing Syrah. For those out there that think Australia, probably our, our channel has definitely got a lot to speak, you know, for when it comes to this, these kind of things. We do a lot of Shiraz shaming on here. I think it's Grenache is what I think that wine is. It's a variety that's been doing really well in Australia lately. Um, growing in popularity, loves the hot, dry climate that we've got, so it does quite well growing. Aussie Grenache, I reckon that's a $40 bottle of wine. And I'll have six of those. I'm just gonna go like a yeah, GSM blend. I think we do Grenaches really, really well in Australia. Um, I'm going six. I think this is really good. Uh, I'd happily pay $35 for this. McLaren Bell Shiraz energy and that like Grenache blue fruitedness and fresh red cherry. It's really good. Like I'd be very happy to drink this quite regularly. Yum, 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 yum. This is amazing Syrah. This is next level Syrah. This I would happily pay 65 bucks a bottle and I would buy 12 freaking yum yums. That's, um, that's all class. <laughs> Another one, lighter red. This could just be straight Grenache. Like, this is really cool. Love this kind of pale ruby red thing. I'm gonna guess this one's corked. It's just, it's got this sort of like, yeah, wet. I, I think this is what corked means. Like when it's like wet cardboard and stuff like that. That's kind of what it smells like on the nose. It smells like Grenache, a little bit reductive, but it has outrageous structure, probably Gamay. Um, so I'm probably gonna go with Gamay on that one. Something's happened there. That's really strange. It, was, it, it, it just feels dull. I, and like, I can see what it would be without this kind of like dull character that might have affected the wine. Because there is this vibrancy, this fresh red cherry to it. And then, yeah, it tastes quite, I don't know, mildewy. <laughs> um, um, I'm gonna say that I would pay 22 bucks for that and I'll just have the one. Um, if it is Gamay, what a luscious, lovely Gamay. We've had some really, really, really tasty Gamays in the last couple of weeks. Um, and I'm all for that, if that is indeed Gamay. Uh, dollars a bottle for it, and I would buy 12. I think they're really, really good. You should totally stock up on this. The amount of tannin and structure that's there is like quite full on. I'll see what the other boys think, because I'm really confused by this. Maybe I need to come back to that, because it's starting to kind of open up a little bit. Maybe it's just really tight grain tannins and the old oak. I'm gonna come back to that. <laughs> Um, one number six, surely now, surely now we're having a big red Shiraz. Oh wow though, that, that smells awesome. That smells awesome, hell yeah. This needs time. This needs a lot of age to it. So right now it feels very disjointed. There's a lactone richness to it. It's quite milky. There is, there's a lot of density to it. And there's this like chocolate coffee thing. There's just such voluptuous and like intensity to it that I can totally see a lot of people Boomers, essentially, would really enjoy this. Like, people that smoke a shitload of, like, White Ox cigarettes. Oh, yeah. It's milky. It's big Aussie Shiraz. Big Aussie Shiraz. I remember when I first started doing these videos and, like, Brendan and Noel would describe a wine as having, like, a lot of lactone sort of flavours. And I was like, there's no milk in wine. What the fuck are you talking about? But then, as you drink more and more of it, especially when you start drinking more and more lights to medium weight reds, then you come across something like this. And genuinely, the first sensation as this wine sitting in your tongue is it does feel, it has got the same mouthfeel as milk. There are types and styles of like Syrah in Australia that definitely should die. This is not one of them. This definitely can live. Wow, dude. Makes me second question number four. Yeah, it definitely feels like Barossa Shiraz. Uh, I'd, I'd pay 50 bucks for it, but as you can see the quality there, but far out, uh, that's really, that's dense. Um, let's go back to this Grenache and see if it's kind of mellowed out. Yeah, yeah, it's jammy. It smells pretty wonderful. It smells like uh, blackberries and like a brambly uh, tart or something that you might get from a nice country bakery. I have, I'll be honest, in terms of like doing better, I have bought a dozen of everything save wine number two, which can go fuck itself. Um, so let's just go and see what, uh, the rest of the boys think. But yeah, like overall, um, I thought these wines are pretty solid. Like pretty good representations yeah, uh, of um, what we've done for the last you know, 100 years as well. I'll be honest, I had straight dozens bar one. Oh wow. Wow, damn. Yeah, I really Hell enjoyed yeah. these wines. All right, well, there yeah. we go. We're not gonna be completely unpatriotic. I thought that was solid. I, there weren't any here that I loved. Like there weren't any that were like, yep, yeah, I need these. These are my favorite yeah, sorts of expressions, sure. but they were all just, yeah, great, fine, good. I think the one, like I'm kind of, I feel you. Like I think kind of, that some of them are just like, I would drink them happily regularly, but mm. not necessarily like, this is the best thing I've tried all year. I need to have this in my fridge yesterday. Yeah, I'm not I showing off with them. Yeah, fair chat. But I disagree with all comments. There are things that I want. I want all of these in my fridge all the time. Sick. <laughs> <You're talking laughs> I had a good time. I had a well, good time. Let's get cracking. Right. Number one, straight does for me. Not, yes. It's because this will just age forever. Mm -hmm. It's just the best. It's, mm -hmm. uh, Hunter, it's got that Hunter Valley Semion energy. Uh, 
just lemon balmy high acid, just racy fucking refreshment. Ah, so yum, this yum, wasn't yum. Chardonnay. I call, I call <laughs> this it was Riesling. Chardonnay. You got it um, Riesling. But no, he's right. It's, it's Semyon. I called it completely wrong. I feel it's Semyon. <sighs> yeah, I think it, it, it gives me Hunter Valley energy. Mm. Um, and, you know, if we're going to talk about, you know, Australian wine heroes and things that we do differently or uniquely or better than anyone else in the world, we do Semyon fucking differently than everybody else. Mm. 100%. Um, yeah. So I really liked it. Uh, I wanted a dozen because I, you know, I could have one tomorrow. I could have one in twenty years. It'll still be good. That's a really good point. I, yeah. I was confused. I thought it was Chardonnay that was leaning more in the like sort of hot oaky style than the buttery sort of style, which mm. is what I lean more towards. So from there, I was like, oh, it's nice. I spent forty bucks on it, uh, but I only needed three bottles of it. Uh, Fifty-five and twelve. Wow. Nice. Right. Lucky. Helm it is Riesling. Ah, very good. Helm Riesling, classic dry from Canberra. 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 Yeah, see, this is, uh, I, was, cool. I was in my own head, probably South Australian bias. I was expecting a Riesling in this lineup. Yep. And I was expecting Claire. I was not Same. expecting Canberra. I, I called it Claire Riesling, but no, Canberra just didn't even rate in my head, to be honest, and incorrectly so, because good. that's really, really good. Good wine good trivia wine. for you on the back of this bottle. Um, wine trivia. When was the first Riesling vine planted in Australia? Uh, uh, I imagine it was, wasn't it Steingarten uh, in the Barossa or Cusie Vale? According to our friends at uh, Helm, the, 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 it could have been Arthur Phillip on the first oh, fleet yeah, back in one, 1788. Yeah, one of the that was uh, brought across. James in, Busby, 1831. Johann Stein in 1837. Steingarten. Yeah, MacArthur's in 1841. Captain Bell, 1824. But uh, what is certain is that Riesling was one of the first wines in Australia. So there you go. We've got a long history of it. We've got a very unique style in the context of the world. Mm. Um, this is probably more like old world, yeah. you know, Alsatian mm. or even Austrian or dry German rather than like cool Australian style Riesling but that doesn't mean it's not fucking awesome yeah 40 That's bucks too good. yeah delicious wow bang 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 wine number two well then I reckon this might be Semyon <laughs> oh no <laughs> or at least like an SPS or SSB kind of area. explains why I only wanted three <laughs> I wanted this, six I really this, quite liked it this is the wine that like everything else was super strong for me, but yeah, this was the wine. I was just like, really? Just kind of, nah, nah. I, I was really vexed actually at this point straight away because I'm like, I'm not too sure where we're going with this whole Aussie heroes vibe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, it's it, what is it like the hero, not the hero that they want, but the hero they need maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you call this one Batman. Not the hero Batman. Batman. <laughs> yeah, but you're thinking more like, um, you know, George Clooney Batman with the nipples rather than like. like this could um, be a nice reductive Fiano. <laughs> this could be a nice reductive Fiano as well, which would, which would change my tune. The Palette weight isn't there for you, it. Uh, has that changed a bunch for you guys since we first drank it's, it? It's a less like uh, passion fruity and I floral. Love the, I love the palette. Yeah, it's gone very palette. like nutty and savory. I'd, I'd upgrade my order to six for that now. Yeah, I think it's my be aged, Sam. Um, mm. Half a dozen mm. for me. I had half a dozen. I wanted to pay 29 bucks for it. I just thought it tastes like almond meal. Uh, half a dozen and 30 bucks. I was still at 40 bucks for this. Lucky? No, Thomas. Uh, it's Semyon. Yeah, absolutely. Hunter Valley, Cellar Reserve, Semyon. This is a different uh, producer. But, uh, 2017. Oh, 2016 must be. No, 2017. This is, this is one of those yeah. like funny ones because they're, you know, incredible they producer. Um, like, uh, honestly, like some of the best Semyon out there. Um, but you don't really see him outside of New South Wales, and that's the one thing that I think Semyon needs to needs to like. Andrew Thomas is fantastic. Andrew uh, is Andrew Thomas. Yeah, Andrew Thomas. Yeah. Um, uh, does yeah an incredible job, but like just outside of the context of, of New South Wales, like you don't see a lot of these in it's, Victoria. You don't see a it's lot. It's the of white these equivalent land. of like Coonawarra Cabernet. It is a very daddy yeah. dad kind of wine. Um, and it's just like, I can understand if you're giving a glass of white wine as like an, er, like an early adopted drinker, it's the first time you're drinking wine and you give it some of that. It's a fucking hectic drink. It is that hectic. is a seven year old white wine. Yeah, it and that's like it's pristine. really impressive. It's pristine. Yeah. Yeah, again, now 30, it'll be sweet. <laughs> um, moving right along, uh, this was wine of the lineup for me. I fucking <laughs> love this one. It's a strong wine. Very uh, strong wine. I got bugger all out. I just said blah. Like it was fine, but I got bugger all out of this. I'm so uh, surprised that you guys were as into it as I, you are. I, so I, 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 like I said, I was into all of these. It's not my wine of lineup, but it was a very, very strong contender for it. Um, mm. I, as a stab at variety, I'd love to know what you did. I, I went with Viognier. Um, out of this because the nose is really aromatic and there's not a lot of acidity there. Um, I was just, I think it's a very good wine. I went Fiano. 
Oh yeah, it's got yeah. that fleshy palate way. I think there's a bit of oak use here that's kind of well well utilized here. And that nice kind of savory thing, it has that nice just real fleshiness that I just love from what like meeting What a lovely with. wine. It's delicious. Uh, if it, it's Viognier, wine. this is the most restrained Viognier in the fucking mm. world. Mm. Um, but it's really cool. Like I, I really loved it. Um, I, I wanted a dozen. I'd be happy to pay yeah. 50 bucks. I think it's just I really am good. happy to pay 55 and 12, please. I got one for 30. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it wasn't doing it for me. I, I understand, yeah. It, it is also like, it's, it's quasi-intellectual. There's yeah, a lot I of detail that you have to kind of search for to kind mm. of like... Oh man, the finish is just persistent. It's, it's just so fucking, lovely. No it's one's awesome. ever described me as quasi-intellectual. So <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't get that. Emphasis on the quasi. Yeah, quasi. <laughs> All right, so where are we at, Lockie? Boom! Piano! Piano. Piano. Awesome. We got, about, we got a few awesome. models downstairs of this, actually. Um, Mate, yeah. that is that is really, really, really impressive. Yeah. If that's the way the Fiano was going, yeah, this is like, this is this is their statement. So that like, you know, Coriol brought Fiano into Australia, and then mm -hmm. they you know wanted to elevate it to a bit of a higher status, and they Damn. have started barrel fermenting and used oak, and this is mm -hmm. kind of what they're producing out of the bale, wow. which is really, really cool. Just textural, the salty, nose fucking is delicious. Just, wow, that's yeah. so cool. It, it rules. It just rules. It, it, yeah, it, it's awesome. What I like that it, it's it's oak into influence, but it doesn't look like Chardonnay. Mm. No, right? it looks like something different. And I think that's what's great about it. Yeah, it has its own identity. One and four. Uh, what do I think about one and four? I can't. Yeah, I actually no. I remember this great little detailed blend. Fucking delicious. I was I agree with the blend uh, shout because I initially was like. All my talk of this was Syrah, and eventually I encountered something that I believe is more Syrah than Syrah can possibly be. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and then I came back and I was like, nah, it's Pinot. And then I was like, it's smelled it again. I was like, I actually don't know what, I think it could be a blend. I think it's <laughs> like, It seems like a GSME or a Syrah dominant kind of blend uh, because that peppery prettiness yeah, is so yeah, yeah. good. You know what, now, you know, I'm thinking this. Oh, this man. could be fucking um, uh, spin effects. True. This could be like True. cool style Barossa, like detail True. hands off, lighter lighter shades. This could be someone like that. But it's it's definitely in that Syrah verse. Mm. It's that olive like spiciness is just so particular oh, to the variety. That, yeah, but yeah. yeah. What do you think no, of the wine? I love I love the nose of it, love the palette of it. Um I went down the Grenache sort of path for yeah. what I was calling it. I thought it had that sort of like heat that mm -hmm. Aussie wines do quite often get mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's famously a pretty hot country down here. Um, yeah, super into it. This is probably my pick of the wines of the lineup mm. until we get into the really milky thing later on. Um, but yeah, I wanted six bottles of it, 40 bucks. That's uh, cool. 12. I was, I was 6 and 35. 12 and 65. Lucky. Place of changing winds. So this is, oh, this is Pinot. You no, know, this is Macedon Ranger's Syrah Pinot. Syrah Pinot. <laughs> so you were. So you're, you're kind of man, dude. Yeah, that's right. amazing. I'm like, it's right. No, it's Pinot. No, it's Syrah. It's Syrah Pinot. It's Syrah Pinot, as it turns out. I don't... We did a whole tasting on blends. <laughs> you couldn't. Yeah. We determined it's impossible to taste oh. what's in a blend. And then you uh, nailed it. Okay, this... I'm, I'm happy. I haven't nailed it in a while, and I'm happy to nail that one. Oh, wow. So, I, that's honestly so, so bold from these guys to do a This Syrah is Pinot Rob Walters. He is the um, a proprietor and owner of Babendum. Uh, this is his personal... Um, uh, like winemaking venture, uh, famous for exceptionally, he was one of the first ones to go and do exceptionally um, uh, dense planting, uh, like really, really high like number of vines per hectare. We're talking like blowing burgundy out of the water. He's it's just, insane. It's just, yeah, it's insane. And minuscule production. In mm. terms of like champions, I mean, the Syrah Pinot, it's, he's not the first to do that. You no, know, like McWilliams have been doing it. It's that that old sort of almost like claret style um, thing. Yeah, very cool to see. It's a delicious wine. It's fantastic. Is it Australia's future? No, no, no. no. It's like, very good though. I'm uh, moving right along. Wine at number five. What was up with this? Grenache. Yeah, it is Grenache, but it was really interesting aromatically. Like, I for a half a second, I thought it was corked. Mm. It has this like like cardboardy. Yeah, but yeah. it's it's under screw cap. Um, so I right. was really confused, um, and, but the more and more it opened up, it kind of became something a little bit, um, something that I was really interested in. Like I, I ended up moving from like two bottles to three. I started getting there, but there was something with it that just didn't get me. You know, it had everything that I wanted it to be, mm. but then there was this like you know corky spice thing that just attracted defi it's me. De there's definitely something there. Like yeah. I think, I think either this is a young wine or it's been freshly bottled and it's bottle shocky. Um, I bought 12 on the basis actually of how much I would drink in quantity. Mm. Right. Not necessarily on the basis of how much I enjoy it. 
um, like I've written down 38 bucks. Like that's my basis of quality is like how much I'm going to spend. How much, how how much, much would I drink worth, of how it? How much would I drink? I'd, I'd spend 38 bucks and I'd probably buy 12 because if it does flesh out a bit in bottle, I'm going to be stoked. Um, but I, I don't think it's a upper tier one unless there's a bit of context yeah. there. Uh, very quiet, pretty muted for what I would Aromatically myself. very quiet, yeah. like, you know, silent yeah. even. Mm. Um, but it's, when you taste it, you can see the detail in it. It's got this lovely tannin, the, the, the fruit mm. weight is beautiful, but it just has this thing that's like affecting, I don't know what it is, but yeah. it's weird. It was holding me back. Uh, I ended up one for 22. I, yeah, I was just like, is this wine corked? Am I finally going to understand what corked? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I asked, screw cap. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> three, three for 40. Like, I wanted to give it a few shots. I wanted to, I, I trusted the wine making in it, that mm. it's like, this might come good. Mm. Mm. All right, where are we at? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I've bought this wine. Yeah, I've had, I have this, this wine is, at home. Yeah, this is definitely not looking as good as it has done in the past. It is a stunning wine usually, and these guys are masters with Grenache. Yeah, I usually um, love these guys' wines. That yeah, what's going on there? You know, uh, eighty-year-old bush vines in uh, McLaren Vale farmed organically and made into this. Like, it, yeah, this is, it has young Gara winemaking all over it. Yeah, it just has something that's going on. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Quite, a bit quiet. I might need to give it a decant and come back to it tomorrow or something like that. Mm. For sure. Mm. Sure. Now. 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 Gentlemen. My wine a lot up. This was the first wine. You know how you guys always talk about like wines having like lactone yep. notes to them? This cool. is the first wine. Look at the colour of the <laughs> fucking glass. The Melanoma 5000, you can't even get light through the thing. No, no. You see your reflection in it. You don't see through it. Um, this is the first wine that I've ever had where like it hit my mouth and I'm like, this feels like milk. This yep. honestly yeah, feels yeah, like yeah, milk yeah, is yeah. going into my yeah. mouth right yeah. now. It is yeah. that viscosity. I love this though. I was into it, man. I the smell of this, it reminds me there's like only a handful of wines that I've ever had that I've kind of kind of like it just has etched itself in the back of my brain. And it was like Larry Cherubino's Syrah. Okay. And it, I think it's because the producers, they mm. all like work in a bit of a clique and they use this cooperage called Mercury. But uh, those casks they use, they give that lactone thing, but the smell of it is almost like candied eucalyptus. Dude, it smells like really, 100%. really yeah. specific. Yeah, like mm. butter menthol y. Yeah. 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 yeah, it has that kind of like, um, you know, the blackberry soothers with yes. the menthol. Yeah, 100%. Like that's the kind Perfect. of thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I did not like this. I, <laughs> like, I get it. I get why people love this. I, yeah. I can see the intensity with the flavor. Oh, but shit. right now, I think it needs 10, <laughs> 10 years I before that. I want to drink it. Dude, it's it. so it intense. Needs, it needs a decade before I'm ready. Dude, like, that is so yummy. So it's like every, like, why it's so thick? I feel like the old the guy, guy is saying, why? <laughs> like, I, I feel like the old guy trying to get the neighbors to turn down the fucking house party music. Yeah. There's so much flavor going on here. There's mm. almost too much. It's mm. just like, chill out. Yeah. Calm down. Like, I could not drink a bottle of that. There is no doubt. I'll be sideways. Yeah. A glass but, of that uh, with a really rich dinner, like, you know, would sure. be great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a, it's a, well, yeah. I'm rolling with 65 bucks and 12, please. Two for 50. Uh, six for 40. Yeah. Standard. Money. Big fat money. Look at that punt. Punt. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd your thumb go? From? Yeah, dude, honestly, like, <laughs> it just wild. disappears in there. Yeah, that, the punts of these bottles are like that, like the crevice in the couch. Wow. The shit goes yeah, totally. Yeah. This, this feels exactly <laughs> like the last time we had Standish. And Laura and I did finish off that bottle and didn't regret it. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. I liked the other wine more than I do like this one. This yeah. one's a little bit too fucking decadent for me. Like, oh, I get it. I, I, I really get it. I really get it, but I, I want freshness on this. Yeah, dude, it vanishes up there, hey. Is, that is just, it's a portal to another dimension. <laughs> Bonkers. Okay, well, All right. wine of the lineup isn't going to be that one then. No, nah, definitely not. Can't sorry. be. Sorry, sorry, boys. Um, I, I'd put forth either there or there for me. Mm. Uh, I'd go, oh, you're not a fan of that Fiano? Uh, Henry no, Newman was into it. I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy with the Syrah Pino. Oh. Like, Are to you? be honest, 80 bucks is a lot of money for that wine. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I, I get why, because the farming's so immaculate, but fuck. Well, <laughs> yeah, I was going 12s. Uh, my 12s were the, no, where was I at? I was 12s on, I was only 12 on the Fiano, but where is my 6s, which is 2. I like four. this a lot. I like this a lot nah, more well, now. D yeah, democracy needs to say, let's go play some changing moves. I get it. Like, it's a very fucking good wine. It's a very, very good wine. There's a lot of good wines here. There's a lot of good wines. And just the fact that we're talking about what can Australia do the best, like uniqueness. Yeah. 
There is no doubt we're Fiano fans. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, no, we're biased on that one. Big Grenache fans, and I've put my case for for Grenache before. Yeah, shame about that wine not looking perfect, but like, Blue at Springs Grenache is one of the best places to grow that mm. wine in the fucking hands down, world. Hands down. Riesling, we already have been saying this, the world has underestimated Australian Riesling for mm -hmm. a while. Semillon's always been, it's, it's like, this is, this is what a, what a really, and like the quirk of the, the whole Syrah Pinot blend, I'm yeah. kind of into. I'm kind yeah. of into the quirkiness. I'm yeah. kind of into the, we, it. no one else does it, yeah. literally. Mm. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Maybe for why. a reason, but when they taste that good, it's a convincing yeah, argument. It. Yeah. You know? And then you've got Standish, which is like taking something that has historically we've been known for for a long time and doing it in a bit more of a more I would drink more Barossa Shiraz if they all look like that. I, I mm. would drink more Barossa Shiraz if they look like the other ones that he does. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. Place uh, of changing winds. Uh, Sarah Pino. Sarah Pino. There you go. Talk about Australian quirks. Let's go. See you next week. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.